Let's imagine the following situation. There's a pristine lake with an area of about two kilometers and an average depth of about 10 meters and with a river that flows through with a rate of about 10,000 cubic meters per day. Then a factory is built on this lake and this factory dumps about 100 kilograms of chemical waste in the lake each day. Given this information, we might like to calculate how much chemical waste will be in the lake in the days succeeding the factory being built. To answer this question, we'll develop a discrete dynamical system model of the lake and factory. To begin, let's introduce some notation. We'll let t equal time in days after the factory was open. Then our main state variable will be w sub t, the amount of chemical waste in the lake in kilograms on day t. And for convenience, we'll define another variable, the concentration of the chemical waste, c sub t, in kilograms per meter cubed on day t. Let's also define some parameters. We'll let v equal the volume of the lake in cubic meters. We'll let f equal the daily flow of water through the lake in cubic meters. And we'll let r equal the daily release of chemical into the lake from the factory in kilograms. w sub t is our state variable. We added the variable c sub t just for convenience. The concentration c sub t is just the amount of waste divided by the volume. So really we didn't need to put c sub t in there. We could always write it in terms of w sub t. But using c sub t will just make our derivation a little simpler. v, f, and r are parameters of our system. Given the information about the lake and the factory, we know exactly what the value of the parameters must be since the area is two square kilometers and the depth is 10 meters the volume is two kilometers squared times 10 meters which is two times 10 to the power of seven cubic meters the flow is 10,000 cubic meters per day and the daily release is 100 kilograms However, rather than using these specific numerical values, let's just stick with the parameters themselves. We can write down the dynamical system and solve it in general for v, f, and r. That way we could tell what would happen if the lake happened to be of a different size, or the flow happened to be of a different rate, or the factory happened to dump chemicals in at a different rate. To write down a dynamical system model involving the chemical waste W sub t, we need to concern ourselves with the change in the chemical. The change in the chemical each day is equal to the amount that entered the lake minus the amount that left the lake. In terms of our state variable, the change in chemical in one day, say from day t to day t plus 1, is just w t plus 1 minus w t. The amount of chemical that entered the lake is easy to write down. It's just the chemical released by the factory each day, or r. The tricky part is to figure out the amount of chemical that leaves the lake each day. We know the amount of water that leaves the lake each day. Well, that's just the parameter f. But we don't want the amount of water, we want the amount of chemical that leaves. Since we assume that the chemical is well mixed throughout the whole lake, to get the amount of chemical that left, we just need to take F and multiply by the concentration C sub T. But we really don't want to use C sub T because that's not our state variable. We want to write everything in terms of our state variable W sub T, but we know that C sub T is just the amount of waste w sub t divided by v. So we can replace c sub t with w sub t divided by v to get that the amount of chemical that leaves the lake in one day 
is f times w sub t over v. Putting these all together, we get that the dynamical system is therefore wt plus 1 minus w sub t, the change in the chemical, is equal to r, the amount that entered, minus f times w sub t over v, the amount that left the lake in one day. And this will be true for t equals 0, 1, 2, etc. every day. Okay, we have our state variable w sub t, our rule for the evolution. The only thing that remains is to determine what the initial condition is. What is w naught, the amount of chemical pollution in day zero? Since we assume the lake was pristine before the factory was built, and t is the number of days since the factory was built, we should use the initial condition that the initial waste is just zero. So this is our discrete dynamical system model for the chemical pollution in the lake. We can immediately see from this model that the actual values of the flow rate f and the volume v don't matter in and of themselves. All that matters is the ratio f over v because that's the only way that f and v show up in our dynamical system model. So even if we don't know what f is and don't know what v is, as long as we know what f over v is, we can determine the evolution of the chemical waste. So sometimes we might replace the ratio f over v with just a single parameter. Let's call it gamma, the Greek letter gamma. So this is an effective parameter. And using gamma rather than f over v allows us to write the dynamical system more compactly. And that the change is just r minus gamma times w sub t. You can calculate from the parameters given that gamma is 0 0.0005, and we know that r is 100. So the values of these two parameters are all we need to know in order to evolve our dynamical system. Given these parameters and this rule, we can determine how much chemical pollution will be in the lake each day after the factory was built.